he said to me, um, just out of the blue, because Bob, do you go to church every Sunday? I'm like, I don't only go to church every Sunday. I usually go two or three other times during the week. And that's all he asked. He didn't ask anything else. And then about six months later, he said, you know, I've started going to church. Uh, my wife's not yet, uh, but I'm, I'm starting to go to church. And I've never talked to him about church at all. I mean, that was the only time I talked about when he asked me the question. <laughs> so you see that what happens is if you can be really successful in your life with your family and, your, uh, it, and at work and in the community, it's com very compelling for people who are very, you know, that, that want to see kind of the peace and happiness that comes with doing these things for a higher purpose. Yeah. Welcome to Apostolicum Actuositaten, an interview series on effective apostolic activity for the 21st century. My name is Christopher Pereira. I'm the CEO of Tepeyac Leadership. And I'm Andreas Widmer, director of the Sioka Center for Principled Entrepreneurship at the Catholic University. Today, we are speaking with Bob Mulhern. And as we do every time we meet, we're exploring what it means to be a Catholic professional in civil society. So welcome, uh, Bob, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So one of the things that we like to start with, Bob, is just um, to quickly give our audience an idea of who our, our victim or our guest for the day is. If you could tell us a little bit, I know you, you are ha happily married and have a beautiful family. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. And then what you do professionally. Sure. So I've been married 33 years. My wife, Tina, and I have nine children uh, and right now eight grandkids and one on the way and a uh, very happy family. And we, I work in the commercial real estate business. I manage commercial brokerages, uh, brokers for Colliers International, which is an international firm, but I run the Arizona operations. Like, where did you study and how did you end up being in, in commercial real estate? I understand you did a lot of different kinds of real estate too, no? Yes. So I, I uh, studied business at Arizona State University. Uh, my dad was a home builder, so I always wanted to get into, into development. And then what was interesting is I actually went to work for a home, uh, home builder out of college, and uh, he quickly moved me to their commercial uh, division. And so that was uh, 40 plus years ago, and I now have been working commercial real estate ever since. And it's been in the areas of development, uh, property management, and now brokerage. And so I, I currently have 60 uh, commercial brokers, 100% commission brokers, and our business here is about a $50 million business here in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. You know, I always find it interesting that I've worked in different industries and software and so on. And, and as Catholics, we assign uh, spiritual value to our work and, and of course, to our industry. I mean, you're, you're a Catholic, a practicing Catholic in this industry of helping people get homes and offices and, and places to work and, and store and whatever. Um, can you, I mean, do you have a view of, of of how you see your work spiritually and specifically your industry of helping um, sure. of, of doing that? Yeah, we, and it's a, that's a great question because, you know, in commercial brokerage is, is uh, the nature of the business is if you don't win the business, you get zero. There's no, there's no payment for second place. Right. So there's, okay. it can be, yeah, it can be very a tendency to get really focused on winning. And so uh, one of the first things I did when I got here is to create a value uh, proposition for everyone. And, and the very first piece is that we were going to compete with honor. That we weren't gonna, we weren't gonna try to win at any cost, but we we're gonna compete with honor. That we we're gonna respect each other and that we we're gonna work together. Those are three simple things, uh, but it's really amazing over my uh, 14 years here, it's helped kind of attract the kind of uh, brokers we want and has also repelled those that don't want to play with those rules. So it really is necessary to, um, to have a clear vision of what we're up to. And then I always uh, like to tell everyone here that we're together, we're striving together toward great things. So my, my job is to help them strive toward their goals and help them you know, keep a good life, work-life balance in the meantime. Well, I, I love what you just have shared, Bob, and I want you to, to expand on it because these three components is kind of like a code, right? You have a code at the office. Um, people might think that we are sometimes, and they're going to try to give you examples of certain industries and where they would say it's absolutely impossible to bring your values or your faith into this industry or this space. But there's always a way, right? And, and when you establish this sort of 
code of honor for the for the office for your team you didn't uh, impose on anyone a set of christian values or a christian view of the world however you are being very faithful to who you are and what you represent right could you tell me a little bit about that how you see that and then maybe go a little bit more into how each of the three components apply to the work sure so well the, well the great thing is when i was interviewing for the position uh, I, there were the, the final interview, the president of the, of the U.S. was in the room. They had a number of uh, local brokers here. And the first question they asked me was, what are your priorities? And so I told them, I said, my top priority is my faith. Second is my family. Third is my health. Uh, fourth is work. And fifth is the community uh, service. And uh, so I said, so the good news is work made the top five. <laughs> you know, they, they did, I don't know if they knew exactly how to accept that, but what it allowed me to do is um, if they didn't want that, then they could have not hired me. So what it's allowed me ever since then is just to be myself. And so to your point, Christopher, I, nobody here feels like I'm trying to uh, convert them to the Catholic faith, but they all, they all know I'm a very strong Catholic committed to what I believe in and that, that I believe that the um, the values that, that come from that uh, are good for business, good for life and things like that. So, so it's allowed me just to have really um, good influence over the people here because they really look to me for um, uh, help in this work-life balance uh, and to be successful in business. Uh, in business. So it's been, a great, it's been a great position for me to have answered the question that way and now to have a chance to live it for 14 years. Now, we, we just, in our last interview, we talked to somebody in the finance you know, industry and they, and as a Catholic there, there's two options, what you're not investing in and what you're investing in. So it's right. positive, the, the via positiva or negativa. And, and so what, what I think is challenging for us leading companies is to say, so, Bob, what are you doing more of? What are you doing that other people are not doing in your company that you're still doing in a, sec in a completely secular and I think in your case, a public company, right? And, yes. And what are, what are you doing that others are not doing and what you're not doing that others are doing? Yeah. And so I think what we are doing is, is like I said, we are being very clear on how we do business. I think that, uh, I think people, uh, a lot of our competitors have uh, lots of, um, lots of language on what's important to them. Ours is very, very simple. Again, <laughs> compete with honor, respect each other, work together. And so th th those don't take explanation, right? And so there's no question. And believe it or not, you know, in this business, there are people that, again, like I said, don't want to compete with honor. So that it just immediately, they don't want to come to work here, which is great. Or they don't want to respect uh, these brokers who, who are very successful. They don't really want to respect the, the, the support team. They want to boss them around. And so I say to them, look, we, we don't boss around uh, the support team here. And so, so again, um, there are people that say, oh my goodness, I've been looking for a company like this so long. I am so grateful to hear this. And there's others like, they, they you know, they, they seem interested, but, they, but you never hear from them again <laughs> you know, because they don't really want to live that standard. So it's been, it's been uh, like I said, uh, I think encouraging to me that there are a lot of people that we draw here and then once they get here they just make the culture that much stronger see it's interesting that you're saying that because um the, the, what you're talking about is human dignity right right it's actually just how to behave as a human and then how to treat others but what you're practicing which is impressive is you're you're actually investing in human in in, in each human person in right. each human individual in your company and i'm always uh, re reminded of this quote that you can invest in all kinds of things in real estate and money and this and that, but the only investment with infinite return is the human person. And yeah. so you're saying, because what you're doing is not just good and is not just good Christian practice, but it's also very good practice for your company because by now you've done this a few, you know, a few years, uh, yeah. quite a long time, you actually have a team that becomes a competitive advantage. Yeah, it does. And, and the nice thing is, is, is you can make these points in human terms, right? So the the virtues, uh, especially you know the four cardinal virtues, they're human virtues that you can you know you can get better in, you know prudence, uh, you know uh, courage, uh, self mastery, uh, justice. 
So I can use those words. And if they, if someone says, well, they sound kind of religious, I'm like, well, I think they came from Plato. So I don't think he was a Christian for sure, right? He, and so, um, but it, it has allowed me to speak regularly about what's really important here is is uh, is that human element. And that's why, again, we have kind of a tagline, to two really important parts. One is all progress begins with the truth, with no blaming and shaming, right? So there's, because, you know, we need to talk truth to each other. And the second is, is we should be striving together toward great things. And, and, and I always say to people, if you don't feel like we're helping you strive to whatever's really important to you, then then we're not meeting our our commitment because the that if they're, uh, you know, can set really just goals and go after them, uh, then we're all going to be better off. So those those are really two big focuses of mine: is 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 telling the truth without without a edge to it, so to speak, and to realize that if we're not all moving forward, then then really, what are we doing here? If we're not really helping each other in our kind of our life goals. This is fascinating, Bob. What I want to hear, I'd love to hear a story, at least one story, because I know they're there, um, of what you have seen as you have created this culture, right, that's based on values and character and principle and respect and human dignity. Uh, you haven't given, given it a religious tone, uh, but the values are there. People who maybe signed up for it, for it, right, because they saw the benefits of being part of this great team, maybe were, didn't care much for the values, but have abide by the code. Right. And maybe years later came back to you and say, hey, this is a good thing you have going. I've never encountered this before. I'm now applying it in my personal life. Thank you. Have you seen anything like that? I'm sure you have. Oh, yeah, lots of it. And it's, it's interesting because, um, and it's even... It's really interesting, Christopher, because one time a gentleman here who went when I started was really out of the line. I mean, he and I just went to my operations manager and said, this guy's not going to make it because he's not going to put up with me. He was a good producer, but he, I said, he's just not going to put up with me because I just I'm relentless in kind of holding people to standard. And over time, he has softened significantly in this in the way he approaches people. But one day we were sitting somewhere and he uh, he said to me, um, just out of the blue, because Bob, do you go to church every Sunday? I'm like, I don't only go to church every Sunday. I usually go two, three other times during the week. And that's all he asked. He didn't ask anything else. And then about six months later, he said, you know, I've started going to church. Uh, my wife's not yet, uh, but I'm, I'm starting to go to church. And I've never talked to him about church at all. I mean, that was the only time I talked about when he asked me the question. <laughs> so you see that what happens is if you can be really successful in your life with your family and your uh, it, and at work and in the community, it's com very compelling for people who are very, you know, that, that want to see kind of the peace and happiness that comes with doing these things for a higher purpose. Maybe there was a time when, when, when Christians, when Catholics would go out to the public square with a Bible and, and speak loud uh, to the masses, but, uh, this is how we do it today. And this is the perhaps the most effective way to do it. Andreas, what do you think? Yeah, I think actually that's the, I think even the, if you look back with the apostles, it's first, people need to experience the love of God, like and not the finger, but the outstretched arms in a sense. And I think that um, people are just attracted. You, you called it, Bob, you called it this, this balance and happiness. And when people see you as a happy person with a happy marriage and with a happy family, and I, and I mean not in the sort of picture happiness, but the, right. but the deep happiness of a peace that right. comes, the anchored, the, the centeredness, that is has always been attractive and will always remain attractive because that is when we reflect how we're made in the image and likeness of God. And, and when you live that, which is not, it, what, what's showing is not, Bob, it's actually God's peace through that family and through right. him, that family. And that that is the best tool of evangelization because it's tr true, good, and beautiful. And that is just irresistibly attractive to humanity because we're made for it. Right. And I agree. I, that's what I tell people. I think the reason I'm here, because I've had different positions, um, is is that when, when I come in here, there are 100 people in the office, plus or minus. And uh, I, I become a witness for them that they really can pursue 
you know, all of their uh, goals professionally mm -hmm. and still, again, um, have that the piece, as you mentioned, that comes from really recognizing that my priorities in line, that my faith, and, and I'll get a lot of questions on that. They'll say, well, how do you find time to pray? I'm like, well, I get up really early. <laughs> I said, you know, this part of the deal, you know? Um, and I do think, so what's happened, which is interesting to me, is I'm asked to give talks. I'm never asked to give talks on real estate, which is interesting because a lot of people know real estate. I'm asked to give talks on uh, life balance, on time management, on priorities. And I remember recently, uh, I was actually speaking to a group of, of Jewish professionals, and uh, I went through my priorities just as I did, you know, faith, family, uh, health, work, community. And one of them says, well, a lot of people have those priorities. How come they work for you? And, and other people don't seem to work for it. And I said, because I'm more serious about it than most people. And then I gave the example. I said, I was up at 4.45 this morning, so I would have time to pray. And, uh, and I said, so most people don't want to really work it into their lives. I said, but that's how important it is to me. I said, because once the, once the kids get up at six, because I got to start getting them up for school, but everything shifts. <laughs> you shift from the faith piece to the family piece, right? And then we get the kids out the door and then I, then I go either to mass or to work, you know? So then you start the next piece of it. And so I just, I just, uh, I answer honest questions in honest ways. And I usually always start with again, the, my top priority, which is faith, when I answer those questions. Those guys are imposing, a, sorry, but Bob, what you're doing is you're imposing a rule of life, right? And you know, we are so, that is so natural to us, yet most of us don't do it, that we actually have a schedule. It's like the monastic life that we are called to live in, in civil society in, in, as lay men and lay women. And, to, and I also, I just, whenever I do stick to that, that rule of life, it gives you structure, peace, belonging. It's the, it's the rhythm of life that just everything gets better in my life when I do that. What is it about it? What is the key, would you say, Bob? And, and with this question, I think we might have to wrap it up because we're running out of time. That is key to making it work because a lot of people say, I can't do this thing. I can't incorporate prayer. And, and just make it fit. Look at my life. It's so chaotic. There, there are so many pieces of it. Yeah, I, I think the key is, is to really take advantage of all of the tools that allow us these days to save time. I, I give a talk that says, and, and, and a lot of people like to come to it, said, if you'll give me an hour, I will save you 100 hours in the next year. But then I warn them. I said, look, here's the problem. You're coming in here sick and tired. If you have 100 more hours, you might be more sick and more tired, right? So, so you know, it's not all about time. It is about the priorities. And so I said, and then once I give you this time, I ask you to come back to the next talk, which is going to be, how do we use our time to, uh, you know, really for our, of the benefit of our faith, our family, you know, and those things. And it is interesting because um, uh, people then get it to say, I, I, you know, I say to them, look, I, the, the, the phone, the phone just is like, it's the worst thing for a lot of people. These, these, uh, iPhones. It's, it's like one of my favorite tools in the world. It saves me tons of time. So that's why I try to help learn in this this short window of time. But I said, look, you you literally have to create that space in your time in your life to do these things, um, especially uh, family, especially your faith. And if you don't do those, nothing else is going to work. I, I actually draw a telescope on the board, and I'm like, look, here are the five pieces of telescope. I, you know, I put those five in in order. And I'm like, you take. You put these in order and anything that even seems far away, you can see crystal clear. I said, you mix up two of these things, you can't see a thing. Thank you very much. Thank you for jo joining us today. I know there are several pearls that our viewers can uh, take away from this interview. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you all for being with us. Sure. We invite you to like, comment, or share this video and help us attain its maximum exposure. And um, what a great interview. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank so you. Thank you very much, Bob. It was a pleasure and a privilege to meet you. Thank you all for watching today. It's always a privilege to have your attention for a few day, a few moments out of your busy day. And we invite you to come and watch us again, uh, again next time. Thanks for helping us all inspire an effective apostolic activity in the lay Catholic professional world. Mm -hmm.